Hi everybody and welcome to another video in the Deep Learning for Audio with Python series. This time around we're going to talk about artificial neurons and we're going to both understand the theory behind it and also implement them in Python. So a little bit more of a focus on what we'll be learning. So we'll have a quick look at a biological neurons. Obviously it's not going to be a neuroscience class by any means. It's just going to be like some very introductory uh, things about biological neurons and then we're going to move on to artificial neurons and see a little bit how the math works behind it and understanding the uh, the theory there and then we'll move on and we're going to basically implement an artificial neuron from scratch in python so let's get started uh, the picture you have here is that of a biological neuron. So as you see, this is a quite complex uh, system with a bunch of like different things, but we are mainly interested in three aspects of it. The dendrites, which are all of these uh, fil filaments like down here, and basically these are input uh, modules, which uh, uh, are important for the neuron because they get uh, signals from other neurons and they input it, it to the cell body which is the operational center of the neuron and and basically the cell body does some kind of computation on this signal which is electric signal it modulates it and then it passes it on along the axon to all of these different synaptic uh, terminals down here which are connected to other neurons so through synapses and through the axon terminals basically um, what the neuron does is connect, um, being connected to all other neurons. In this sense, the neuron can be seen as a, an individual that stays within a very complex system, within a network, where you have loads and loads of neurons connected together. Now, if you take a neuron by itself, uh, that isn't re it's obviously remarkable but it's not super powerful it becomes super powerful when you put together billions of neurons and the result that you have is basically the brain there and the 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 power of the brain doesn't reside in the structure of the neurons themselves but rather in the incredible number of connections we have uh, among all of our neurons in our brains and thanks like to to these neurons and these connections and we're talking here about trillions of connections of billions and billions of neurons we can walk we can play the piano and we can solve sudoku and play chess for example right so now let's move on to the artificial neuron and basically the 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 story goes that uh, we looked at the uh, neuron, at the biological neuron, and we used a, ve a very simplified version of it to create artificial neurons. And in artificial neurons here, as you can see, you have a series of inputs. So it is x1, x2, x3, with a certain weights associated to these different inputs, like w1, w2, w3. and as you can imagine here, uh, this is the equivalent of the dendrites that we have in the biological neuron. Then we have the neuron itself, uh, which does a couple of things. It does uh, computation in the form of a sum and an activation. And this part of the neuron, in a sense, can be equated to the, to the cell body. And finally, you have like the output of the neuron. Right, so as I just said, so the neuron does a couple of computation. One is called the sum or the net input and the other one it's the activation. So let's take a look at the sum first. So here we have H which stands for the net input and H is nothing, it's just uh, the sum over uh, the all the inputs multiplied by their respective weights. So in other words, over here, uh, H in this case, it's basically X1 uh, by W1 plus X2 
uh, W2 plus X3 W3. So the first phase, in a first phase, the uh, artificial neuron does this sum and, and it arrives in, at a net input. Then we have the second phase of the neuron where we have the activation itself. And so basically the output Y is a function of the activation function F where we pass in H which is the net input. So now there are a gazillion different activation functions in neural networks but we'll be looking at one in particular right now because it's quite simple and it's very common as well. It's called the sigmoid function and so here on the right you have the function itself, uh, itself and on the left you have the graph of the function. So why is this a good function for being like an activation function? Well, first of all, it's bounded between zero and one. Then as you see here, it's a very smooth function. It doesn't have any discontinuity. And this is great because it can be uh, differentiated. So you can calculate the derivatives of this function quite easily. And so what this function does is basically modulating all the uh, inputs and the net input into an output that's uh, limited between zero and one. Right, so if we take that function and we plug it into uh, here, so into like this function over here, you'll see that we have this equation and this equation is basically the equation of a neuron starting from the inputs, uh, moving all the way uh, to the output itself. Cool. So this is somewhat like simple to understand, but it's always like uh, nicer to have like examples to understand what's going on like really in detail. So let's take an example here. And so here we have three inputs again with our very simple neuron. So the first one is 0.5, then we have 0.3, and then 0.2, and then we have um, the, the respective weights over here. So 0.4, 0.7, and 0.2. So now let's calculate the output Y by going through the two phases. Uh, of computations of a neuron, so the sum and the activation. So let's calculate the sum first. And if you guys remember, the active uh, the sum over here is calculated by uh, multiplying x1 by um, w1 plus x2, w2 plus uh, x3, w3, which in our case is, is basically 0 0.5 by 0 0.4 it's these two guys over here and then 0.3 by uh, 0.7 plus 0.2 uh, by 0.2. So if you run the math over there you'll find that the input, the net input is equal to 0.45. Cool, so now we have our net input. Let's uh, arrive at the output by using the activation function and as we said we're going to use the sigmoid activation function and so basically we are plugging in this 0.45 which is our net in input into the activation function and then we have the result which is 0.61 that's the output of uh, the neuron in this particular case now we have an idea of how an artificial neuron uh, works, so it's time to implement one from scratch in Python. Now we'll implement the artificial neuron in Python and I'm using PyCharm as uh, my ID of choice. Obviously you can use whatever you want. If you want to use Jupyter Notebooks, like please feel free to do that. I'm just using PyCharm because like I'm used to it and I love it. Right, so let's get started here. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll just ensure that we can run the script easily. So, and then what I want to do is basically replicate the um, structure 
of the neuron that we had. So the inputs, the weights, and then the calculations that we did. So the inputs will be uh, represented by a list, a simple list. And then we'll have the weights, which again are going to be represented by lists. So if you guys remember the uh, example artificial neuron or the example parameters for the simple artificial neuron I used uh, before, you remember probably that we have 0.5, 0.3 and 0.2 uh, respectively for x1, x2 and uh, x3. And then for the weights, we would just associate uh, like the numbers respecting the same indexes as the inputs. So for w1, we would have uh, 0.4 and then for w2, we would have 0.7 and finally uh, 0.2 for uh, w3. Uh, and so this way we've basically uh, recreated uh, in this very simple um, data format the inputs and the weights. Cool. Now the next uh, phase is to calculate the output and the output is given by the activate function where we pass in both inputs and weights and obviously you'll see here that the activate function doesn't exist because we haven't defined it yet so it's not going to work um, but this is a function that takes inputs and weights as um, as parameters as arguments and obviously this is the the computational unit of the neuron itself and it's that function that's going to be responsible for doing uh, the net uh, for performing the net input and then the activation function uh, itself and then as the last step over here we're going to do a print and we're going to just print the output so that we can see it now, obviously, if I'm going to run this, as you can see here, I'm going to get an error because activate obviously hasn't been defined. So we need to define activate, which is the, the core function for our, um, uh, for our neuron. So as we said, we define activate and we pass uh, two arguments. One is called inputs, the other one is called weights. And so activate does two things and it just replicates the two phases of a neuron that we've seen in the theoretical part of things. And so the first thing is just perform net input. And the second side of things is to uh, perform the activation right so how do we calculate the net input so we have to loop obviously uh, through inputs and weights and we have to multiply them and so we need to multiply basically the um, inputs and weights on the same index. And so how do we do that? Well, it's quite simple. So we, we create a for loop and we have the X and W's and in, uh, we use the zip function over here and we pass in inputs and weights, right? like this. So if you guys are not familiar with the zip function, like it's a very nice function because it enables you like to unpack two lists and to uh, just like pass them to like these variables over here, index by index. And so like here, for example, when we go through the loop for the first time, this X is going to be basically input at index zero and this uh, w over here is going to be weights at the index zero. Right, so once we have this, then we'll have the h that's going to be, we're going to just like sum, uh, add up the multiplication of x by uh, w to h, which is our net input. Obviously, h is not defined here, so we need to predefine it, declare it over here. 
And so H is going to start from zero and then we're going to loop through all the inputs and weights and we're going to multiply them and add them up to the net input. And so basically now we're done. So the next step, once we have our H, which is our net input, is to perform the activation itself. So how do we do that? Well, uh, it's kind of like really simple because the activation is, in our case, we said that we're going to use a sigmoid function activation. So we call sigmoid and we pass in H. And now we can just return this. And this is the output of the neuron itself and this is like what we're going to get down here and then as a final thing we just like print this output now again sigmoid hasn't been um declared defined anywhere so we need to define this function and so let's define it over here so we define sigmoid it's a function of x and if you uh, guys remember, so this is, we can define this as 1.0 divided by 1 plus the exponential, which is math exp exponential of minus x over here. Now we, do, we haven't defined this, uh, we haven't included uh, this math module, so we need to include it because otherwise we're gonna get an error. And so we're gonna import math. Uh, now the error is gone. And so here we can return y, perfect. So now we have all of the different elements in place. And so now when we run the script, we should be able to get an output and then print the output. If you guys remember, by using these inputs and these weights, we we got, when we run the, the math there, we got an output for the neuron of 0 0.61, something like that. So let's see if we are lucky and we're gonna get like the same value. And as you see here, we do have the very same value. So uh, the result of this uh, computation is 0.61 and that's correct. So here you have it. It's your first neuron implemented from scratch in Python. Cool, so this was it for implementing an artificial neuron in Python. So before living, I want to give you some takeaway points. So as we've seen, artificial neurons are loosely inspired to biological neurons and neurons are computational units and precisely what they do is they receive certain inputs and they modulate that input and using an activation function, they arrive at an output. Cool, so this was it for uh, artificial neurons. So now we have like an understanding of how uh, like this uh, units uh, of computation work. So what's next? Well, before getting into neural networks themselves, we have to understand a little bit more of math. And specifically, we are gonna be looking at matrix operations and vector operations. So if you've enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, just leave a like, and I guess I'll see you next time. Cheers.